everyone, and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care podcast and video. I'm Dwayne. I'm a certified RV inspector, and today we're going to be talking about our personal costs to maintain and repair our motorhome that we have used mainly for full-time travel and camping for the last four years or so. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that we have a 2004 Newmar Class A diesel pusher. And you would also know that I'm a big fan of buying older luxury motorhomes, especially those built between the years 2000 and 2007. I personally believe that they are some of the best motorhomes ever built. Now, I made a whole video about that, so I won't go into that, but here's the video, and I'll put a link to it in the description of the video that we have today and in the podcast, so you can check that out. But here we are four years down the line from buying this RV, and I figure it's a really good time to review the costs on this RV. It would be very helpful and educational for us, but also for you too, and that would be true whether you have a motorhome or even a towable RV, like a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. The reason for that is there's always an engine somewhere that's moving whatever RV you have down the road, and that's even true on towables. And that engine is going to need regular maintenance and repairs. Also, the house of the RV constantly is going to need some kind of repair and maintenance too. In fact, I have a list of all the things that I need to do on my RV, and as soon as I get something checked off, well, something else appears. You never ever really get caught up, and full-time RVers can certainly sympathize with that. But our Class A diesel pusher will often require more money for upkeep than almost any other kind of RV, except for like Super C's. The reason for that is these kind of RVs are bigger. They're more expensive to begin with. They have more amenities. There's more complexity in the systems uh, that are in the RV. But even though I'm going to cover expenses related to my diesel pusher, it's still going to be helpful for you no matter what kind of RV you're thinking about getting or already have. Our experiences will still be helpful. You can just adjust it to the size and kind of RV that you have. So let's go ahead and talk about what it cost us to maintain and repair our motorhome. And before I get to the actual expenses, let's explain what was actually maintained and repaired. And let's start with the list of maintenance items right here. So starting on the list at the top is oil and filter changes for the engine. You have to do that regularly. And of course the air filter will need to be changed. And believe me on these big diesel engines, that's not a small expense. There's also fuel filters that need to be changed. But don't forget the generator on this motorhome, it's a diesel generator. So you're going to need to change the oil and filter uh, for that pretty much the same time you do the engine and of course the air filter as well. Then there's that big radiator back there that you have to take care of. It has to be flushed every few years or so. We did that. When we did, we replaced the thermostats. Then you need to lubricate the chassis regularly. And then we had our shocks kind of wear out on us. So those needed to be replaced. That was not cheap. And our chassis batteries finally gave up the ghost and needed to be replaced. But the big expense for upkeep for maintenance was the tires. When you have a diesel pusher, buying six tires is not cheap, and it certainly wasn't. We just got through doing that. All right, so that's the list of things that we needed to maintain. Now, it's not the full list, but it's just a generalized list, uh, giving you an idea of the things that need to be done and scheduled for. Now, what about repairs? 
Okay, let's show you what we had to repair on our motorhome. And let's start at the top with a brake problem that needed to be fixed. Next, there were bushings that had to be replaced. Inside the RV, some of our ceiling lights just wore out, so we replaced them. The backup monitor stopped working, had to be replaced. In these kind of motorhomes, the air system is prone to leaks, and sure enough, we've had leaks in the front and the rear system that had to be fixed. Our water pump needed to be replaced. The exhaust tip on our engine there is exposed to the weather, it started to rust out, so it had to be replaced. Both fantastic fans that we have in the motorhome finally needed to be refurbished, so all the gears and the arm mechanism for the lid had to be replaced. The antenna had to, to be fixed, the, the mechanism that moves it. We also had a battery cutoff switch that just stopped working and needed to be replaced as well. And then our power seat that we use to, for driving the RV, uh, the solenoid for it went out, that had to be replaced. But one of the really big expenses we've had is the slide toppers needed to be replaced. Now, normally I would put that under maintenance, but these had to be replaced early because of some hailstorms we went through. So I'm counting that as a repair. The really big expense, though, that we've had for repairs has been replacing both house air conditioners, and uh, that was done over the last couple of years. And finally, our water heater needed to be completely refurbished, and that's something I did myself. All right, now, all of this maintenance that I just covered, all of these repairs, they cost us a total of $16,373. Now, our service contract that we had, and by the way, I'm very glad that I had that service contract. It worked out very well for us, and I highly recommend getting a service contract or what some people call an extended warranty on these older motorhomes it covered $3,120 of our expenses here. So our own out-of-pocket expenses were actually $13,253. If you work that out over the four years, well, it was $3,313 a year. Now, when we first got this RV, I had made a budget for maintenance and repairs. And this is what I encourage you to do is don't just leave it to chance. Try to figure out what you are going to need to budget for these costs. And the good news is that I had budgeted from my research about $3,000 a month when we first got the RV. So I'm not that far off my budget for it, but clearly, I think I'm going to have to raise that budget. Costs are going up and COVID has made a lot of that happen. So as a result, I'm going to move from 3,000 a year to 3,500 a year for my budget moving forward. Now, what do we learn from all of this? Well, first of all, what I want you to understand is full-time RVs can be costly to maintain and repair. And the bigger they are, the heavier they are, the more amenities they have, the more complexity that's built into the RV, the more expense you're going to have for maintenance and repairs. Now, that can be reverse engineered too. So if you want to save, you don't want to be spending $3,000 to 3500 a year on keeping your RV going well, then I recommend that you get a smaller RV. You get one that's not so heavy, doesn't have so many amenities, is not so complex. And as a result of that, you can save money. Also, the other thing you can do to save money is the more you can do yourself around the RV, the better. Roughly 80% of the things that go wrong around an RV really can be 
taken care of by an RV owner if they just have some guidance and knowledge to know what to do. And that is true, especially on chassis maintenance. See, for us, we actually chose to have our chassis maintained by professionals. The reason I did that is because I had the service contract. So I wanted a clear record of the maintenance and repairs that I had personally done. And uh, that way the service contract company would know what I've been doing. But you don't have to do that if you don't have a service contract. You could do a lot of the chassis maintenance yourself, especially things that have to do with lubrication or replacing fluids and filters, and you can save money by doing that. Now, in all of this list, there's a lot of things that I didn't include. A lot of little small repairs that goes on from day to day. Little maintenance items that I do regularly that it's just not worth mentioning. There's too much of it to even mention in a video like this. Those kind of things though don't cost a lot. They're just some labor that you need to do. But remember, you need to do the small things as well. And that way you can keep your RV in good shape. What I recommend is try to learn as much as you can about your RV or the RV that you intend to buy if you don't have it yet. Learn as much as you can. Get as much information about it as you can. Try to figure out ways that you can do as much of the work yourself and you will save lots of money. I also recommend talk to more full-timers. Don't just listen to my video. This is my experience. I, I hope it will be helpful for you, but there's lots of other videos on YouTube from folks that are full-timers and they're sharing their experience about maintenance and repairs too. So check them out as well. Get a big pool of information that you can draw from and that way you can get a good feel for establishing the budget that will work for you and the RV that you buy. Well, I hope this review has been helpful for you. If you're planning on future full-time RV travels. I wish you well, and I hope what I've shared with you will be helpful. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.